Hi everyone, today we're going to have a very interesting episode and uh, we are still in Lake Kipia County and this is Well Hung Butcher where we are going to learn all about curative processes for uh, meat and we are with Jack Dyer. Yeah, he is the owner of this place and it's an amazing story that will uh, enlighten you on how you can be able to identify good meat and keep away from eating meat that is not really good and especially during this time that you're head heading uh, to the festive season which of course we love to eat a lot of meat. It's our culture, our Kenyan culture, the nyam chom, you know, and all that. <laughs> yeah, so tell us more about this place. When was it established? Yeah, so we, uh, we started in 2016. So we are five, nearly seven, sorry, five, nearly six years old. And um, we founded to try to bridge a gap between high quality beef production um, from a farm level and a, and a high quality meat uh, to, to, to put onto a consumer's plate. Um, because the, the, the quality that we were buying was not great. Um, but on all the properties, we were producing a really high level uh, of breeding and, and the quality of the animal there was really good. So that's basically why, why we started this. And we are, uh, we, we're different because we've, we've approached the, the processing from a, um, from a more Western perspective. Uh, so we, have, um, we do a lot of aging here. Uh, all of our steaks are aged for a minimum of 28 days. Um, we have really put a lot of research into the, the appropriate way to chill meat, um, keep hygiene practices really good so that the, the quality of the, of the meat product coming out is just fantastic. Okay, the process begins uh, on the farm, obviously. But once they've done their job and the animals come here, uh, we start with, with humane slaughter. Um, and then we go through a process of chilling, uh, aging, and then uh, we do stage one processing, and that, which is things like steaks, uh, mints, uh, beef dice. And then we do a stage two processing, which is the value add products, things like sausages, uh, bacon, pastrami, that kind of stuff. So um, the, the, the first part of the process is, is obviously getting uh, employees ready to handle meat because hygiene is, is crucial. Uh, we're, we're dealing with food. So um, we make sure that all of the employees come through, they sanitize, they, uh, that they set themselves up in a functioning uniform, um, and, then they, and then they start on the first process. So if you just follow me. Once the carcasses come through this curtain, this is now uh, only clean product that ca cannot have had any contamination from uh, mud or, um, or stomach content. This is now clean carcasses. The carcasses are, are split while they're hanging here. And then immediately after splitting, they're weighed uh, with an inline scale here. Um, and that weight is, is how we, we purchase the, the animals from the supplier. So this is now called dressed weight. Once we've completed that process, we, the carcasses then move in here for, uh, for aging. And uh, with the level of constant sanitization that we do in here and, and the temperature, it means that we can comfortably store meat in here for up to 140 days if we wanted to. The, the reason we do this is for tenderness. Uh, we, we are aging for 21 days on the, on the beef carcasses um, as, a, as a first step. That process is, uh, is the enzymes that are inside the, inside the carcass are uh, breaking down the, uh, the cell structure on their way to the surface uh, to, to find oxygen. On beef carcasses, it takes 21 days. Once they've reached the, the, the surface, they'll, they'll perish and they no longer serve a function in the aging process. After that, the next step is, um, 
is the unwinding of collagen, which is what uh, holds the, the, the body together and keeps everything uh, tight and in the right place. This is sinews, uh, ligaments, bones, all of these things. Um, the, the collagen is, is like a very tightly wound spring. Uh, and as you age, that, that spring slowly unwinds, which makes the meat more and more and more tender. So we do our steaks, which is this section here, yeah, from the, the ribeye through to the rump. Um, this section we do for a minimum of 28 days in here. Um, you can push that to, in this environment, we could be doing 150 days, um, which would result in a really super tender uh, piece of meat. But obviously, from a cash flow perspective, it's not the most sustainable <laughs> uh, way of doing things. Is there any other difference beside the meat getting more tender because of having been cured for longer between the meat that is eaten, consumed when it's just freshly slaughtered? So on the carcass you have got um, the, the steaks and they start from the, the, the rump steak up here and they run through to, to the ribeye down here. This section is the, is the most tender and the most sought after part of the animal. Um, the forequarter here uh, is um, if it's cooked correctly and, um, the, and the consumer knows what they're doing with it, can also be one of the best bits. But this lends itself to long, slow cooking. It's uh, the the meat here has a, uh, a component in it called myosin, which, um, which makes uh, soup thicker and things like that. It's very, uh, w once it breaks down, it's very juicy and delicious, but it, it needs to be cooked for a long time, otherwise it's very tough. Um, and this, uh, it, with a slaughter date and, and a date that they can start to be processed. Yeah. How much longer can someone keep, or rather preserve it, before they can consume it? That depends on the, on the packaging and the storage temperature on, on the consumer end. So, so this is marked by the, uh, by the veterinary department. This is to show that this is uh, fit for, fit for consumption and for, and for transport. So, so we aim for uh, the more fat, the better. Yeah, um, fat uh, adds flavor to the meat and it also makes the, uh, the, the meat more tender. The more marbling you have inside the cut, uh, the better. The, the interesting thing with, with the beef that we do is we only do grass-fed beef. So the, the fat is, is crucial um, and it's natural, uh, which means when you cook it and, uh, and you eat it, the, the, the fat uh, liquefies um, and it just has flavor and this is in, uh, as opposed to grain fed where the fat is uh, it's more pasty and it, it kind of coats the inside of your mouth. Um, this is because the, the, these animals are eating something that is natural for them and what they're supposed to be eating so the, the, their energy storage mechanism which is fat is re-accessible by, the, by, uh, by that animal. So next, uh, we'll just have a quick look in here. So whilst, um, whilst the meat is on the tables here and being cut, uh, it's in ambient temperature, which means that the, uh, the, the, the temperature of the meat is slowly rising, which we don't want it to do. So whilst the guys are working on, um, on meat here, uh, they'll also be carrying it back into this cauldron, which is the working cauldron. Uh, being processed on, uh, in the butchery room is being re-chilled in here to ensure the core temperature of the meat never goes above four degrees. So is this where you indicate when uh, it was slaughtered maybe, when the expiry, do they have an expiry date? Yeah, yeah, they have an expiry date, but that happens in the packaging department, which we're going to go to next. Uh, but here you can see this is one of our value-add products. This is a new product we've just started. Uh, so this is pastrami, uh, it's about 
three quarters of the way through the process. This, this meat's been brined. Um, it's gone out of a brine, been desalinated. It's now in a spice rub, and tomorrow morning that will go into a smoker, and it will be smoked for uh, about 13 to 14 hours. There's a question I wanted to ask. For how long can somebody keep the meat, even if they put it in the deep freezer, for how long is it safe? Yeah, so um, frozen, frozen product um, stores in a, the, the standard is 12 months. Um, if your freezer temperature is low enough, um, it's really un, unlimited, I believe. You could, uh, if you get something cold enough, you can, you can store it in a freezer for, for, for a very long time, but the industry standard is 12 months.